Hello and welcome to episode 135 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's episode features the return of Derek Thieler. You, of course, know Derek from the television show Baby Daddy, but his next project, Marvel's New Warriors, is coming out soon, where Derek's going to play Mr. Immortal. In this episode, we're going to talk about how Derek is warring, warrior, warrior, warrioring, warrior, ugh, warrioring, roar, that's not easy to say. Anyway, Derek is part of the Call of the Warrior campaign that's headed up by Dexcom to draw attention to type 1 diabetes and raise money for diabetes charities. Um, I will spend the rest of the day wondering why I can't say warrioring, warrior, warrior, warrior ing up. Warrior ing up. That's what I meant to say. At the end of the episode, Derek and I geek out a little bit about some sci fi that we both realize that we love, and uh, he'll tell me about his dream being in one of those projects. Okay, listen, let's get to it. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is brought to you today by Dexcom. I want you to go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to find out more about the best continuous glucose monitor on the planet. It is also brought to you by Omnipod. Omnipod, of course, the tubeless insulin pump of all tubeless insulin pumps. Just go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box to find out about that. And I'll tell you a little more about that in the show. Before we get to Derek, I want to talk for a moment about Diabetes Awareness Month. It's um, the entire month of November and, you know, everybody I think gets involved in their own personal way. But the goal always seems to be find people outside of the world of diabetes and let them know a little more about it, right? You want to bring people in so that they understand. I hear people talk about it all the time. In the end, what largely ends up happening is that this all becomes sort of an echo chamber, right? You're sort of preaching to the choir. The things you say are being heard by people who already understand. You know, stop and think about it like this. If I go to Google, let's do it. I'm going to go to Google. And I'm going to type in Awareness Month. Okay. Showing results for Awareness Month. January, Cervical Cancer Screening Month. National Birth Defects Awareness Month. National Glaucoma Awareness Month. Thyroid Disease Awareness Month. National Blood Donor Awareness Month. February, Heart Disease Awareness Month. Prenatal Infection Prevention Month. National Cancer Prevention Month. National Wise Mental Health Consumer Month, National Children's Dental Health Month, Age-Related Macular Degeneration Low Vision Awareness Month, National Wise Health Consumer Month. I can keep going, there's a ton more in February, but let's go to March. Colorectal Cancer, Brain, Kidney Cancer, Multiple Sclerosis, National Eye Donor Month, National Poison Prevention Month. There's another 20 in here, Pulmonary Rehabilitation Week. April, Autism Awareness, Child Abuse Prevention, National Donation Life Month, Parkinson's, cancer, head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer, testicle cancer, stress awareness, irritable bowel syndrome. Let's the, uh, April goes on forever and ever. May, mental health, National Melanoma Skin Cancer Detection and Prevention, ALS, National Stroke Awareness, Brain Tumor Awareness, Skin Cancer, Brain Cancer, High Blood Pressure Education Month, Lupus Awareness Month, Better Sleep Month, that I can get behind. Let's go to June because there's a hundred more in May, including Lyme's disease. Uh, June, there's 20 more. Uh, July, there's not many. I guess people are at the beach, but there's still Cord Blood Awareness Month, Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, Eye Injury Prevention Month. Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month, August, Cataract, Children's Eye Health, Immunization, Psoriasis, Spinal, Medical Alert Awareness Month. That's an alert to make somebody aware that you have a disease. Wow, that's meta. Okay, September, getting closer to us, right? September's got 20 of them in here. National Prostate Cancer Awareness, Leukemia, Lymphoma, Ovarian, Childhood Cancer, Sickle Cell. October's got a ton of them. Breast Cancer, Liver Cancer, Down Syndrome, Healthy Lungs. Uh, it's even National Fire Prevention Week in October. Now we're now we're up to November, right? This is us. This is us. National Diabetes Awareness Month. Except there's about 21 things in November, including lung cancer awareness, pancreatic cancer awareness, Alzheimer's awareness, epilepsy, diabetic eye disease. The Great American Smokeout is in November. So is National Child Mental Health Month. All of these things are incredibly important, and they're worth telling someone else about. Creating awareness is, it's of course very, very important. Also a difficult thing to do. To move the needle in any meaningful way takes years and years and years of effort and time. It's very likely that you listening right now won't even participate in Diabetes Awareness Month 
10 years from now, 20 years from now, you'll be off living your life, which is fantastic. There'll be somebody else picking up this mantle for you. But this needle moves very slowly. And while it's incredibly valuable to do and to be a part of, it could be more actionable in the moment, right? We could get more out of it in the moment, I always think. By the end of National Diabetes Awareness Month, you're going to see a lot of people online burned out from it. They're going to be trying their hardest to get people on Facebook and in their real lives to understand their life with type 1 diabetes. But I've just listed for you hundreds of other incredibly important things. And those people all want everyone else to understand too. So that seems like maybe it's understandable when other people don't get it. What we do have right now is the attention of the diabetes community. You are talking to other people who have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Instead of just telling them, I wish this is what people knew, why don't you tell them, hey, this is what I know. I bet this would be helpful to you. Now, this idea gets me excited, right? You're listening to this podcast. You're being bold with insulin or you're trying. You're trying to get rid of your fear. You're trying to understand how insulin works better. Really, it's the, oh, Basil, you got to stop snoring, buddy. I'm in the middle here or something. It, it really is, I'm sorry. It really is the core of what you're doing here. Understanding how your insulin works allows you to make better decisions. These decisions keep your blood sugar from flopping all over the place. You're going to be healthier today, healthier tomorrow, healthier 10 years from now. You're going to live a happier life just for understanding this little bit, right? This little bit of, I have to get rid of my fear. I have to be bold. I need to take control as best that I can. You're learning how to do that Go tell someone else. Use National Diabetes Awareness Month to tell someone else what you've learned about diabetes. Forget trying to find somebody who doesn't understand and beat the understanding into them. But you could find another person with diabetes who's at that spot that you were once, right? Remember remember when you thought, I know there's more to this. I, I, I hear what my doctor's saying. I know what I've been told, but I feel like there's more. And then you found this podcast and you ha- and then you found the nerve to go for it. Find those people who are right at the precipice of that feeling. They're stuck. They're mired down in that that horrible gut-wrenching feeling that they know there's something else they don't know. It's right there, but they can't figure it out. Go help them figure it out. I got a beautiful note this morning from a woman, uh, a person with type 1 diabetes, who just said they found the podcast, and now their numbers have never been better, and they're just happy. Use Diabetes Awareness Month to make someone happy. Derek's going to tell you in a minute about Call of the Warrior, which I think is beautiful. I think it's great. I think you should get out there and tell people how diabetes doesn't get in your way. You know, But don't just say it like that. Don't just say, hey, diabetes doesn't get in my way. Tell them why. Tell them how you've kept it from getting in your way. Give them a bigger, more meaningful message. That's what I hope you guys do this month. That's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, I've gone on way too long. You're here to listen to Derek, not me. I've been talking for so long, I feel like I should play the music again. Derek, how are you? Hey, how you doing, Scott? Good, man. Good. Uh, Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no worries, man. How are you? Good, good. How have you been? Well, you've been good, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) I've been pretty good. I've been pretty good. I was going to say, the last time we talked, you sort of hinted around something was happening, and uh, and then I guess this summer, all of a sudden, it all happened. It's really cool. I was so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting stuff. It's all good. Let's start. I have a question. I, I can't imagine this is going to... I'm worried this is going to make you upset, but I'm sure it won't. I, I'm sure I won't be upset, but I'm really nervous for the question. No, no, no. I'm going to lead with it. So... My wife um, watches This Is Us, right? Okay. And, yeah. and so I watch This Is Us. You, you understand how that works. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and every week I think to myself, did someone at This Is Us create Kevin's character on This Is Us based on you from Baby Daddy? It's weird, right? <laughs> it's, right, right? It's weird. Yeah, it really is. It's, I get it all the time. Okay. But, okay. um... Yeah, I, I I don't know if it was based exactly on me, but there are some definite similarities, right? It just every time I look up, I'm like, they had to. Have, this is ha- somebody has to be a baby daddy fan at This Is Us. Is how it, how it feels to me. Um, yeah. And right. then, and then in the first season, his character dates a girl named Sloane on the television show, but the actress who plays Sloane is 
going to co-star with you on New Warriors. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Milana. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I was just like, I, this maybe this is more than a coincidence. I, I, I don't know. Or I'm finding <laughs> I, lines that don't exist. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have much to, to say on that, except uh, I, think it, I think it's just a bunch of crazy coincidences, but it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it always, it just strikes me. So I think of you every week by mistake, actually. So anyway. Okay. Well, nice. So so let's uh, let's let's go over this for a second. So you're on today because you guys at Dexcom are involved in uh, something for Diabetes Awareness Month, uh, and they're calling it. Is it Call of the Warrior? The Call of the Warrior. Okay. Yep. So tell me tell me what what Dexcom's doing and, and what they're hoping everybody yeah, else. Yeah, will do. essentially what it is. It's they want it to be uh, similar to the uh, the ALS ice bucket, and it br- basically is uh, created to bring awareness to type one diabetes and what they want people to do is videotape or, uh, or take a photo of them doing their warrior call. And, um, that is basically whatever you want it to be. You can interpret it however you want. We just kind of, uh, thought it would be fun for, for people to stand up and, and, and be strong and, uh, make sure that they, uh, they, they tell diabetes that it's, uh, that they're going to achieve their goals with or without it. And um, the, the goal is to build money for, for diabetic charity. So every single time somebody puts up a photo or a video on Instagram or Facebook, and hashtag warrior up, Dexcom's going to make a donation to a uh, type 1 diabetes related charity. And I, see, and I have a list of charities here. Um, Children with Diabetes, JDRF, Beyond Type 1, College Diabetes Network, and Taking Care of Your Diabetes. They're all going to share in the money. And, and I think they're trying to raise up to a quarter of a million. Is that right? That's correct. That's the goal. Cool. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes. And I think it's going to uh, it's, it's hopefully going to be, a, you know, a big uh, uh, participation moment in, for the diabetic community. Yeah. And we're talking just Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram uh, are the are the hashtags that will get donations. So, okay. yeah. OK. All right. Well, that's that's really cool. So, oh, so did you do have you done one yet? So because you and I are talking prior to November 1st, but this is going to go up on November 1st. So have you done one already? Yeah, I did. I actually uh, shot the campaign at my house, basically. I had Dexcom come, come over, and uh, we shot just a couple of videos to kick off this whole campaign. So my, my warrior call is going live uh, November 1st. Okay. So I'm going to try to uh, – I've, I've sent an email to Dexcom. I'm going to try to cajole it out of them so I can put the audio in here so people can hear it. Diabetes is challenging, but it doesn't hold me back. With one simple act of solidarity, I believe that we can create a vibration so loud it will be heard around the world. So, here's the challenge, warriors. We need you to send in a video of your best warrior call. A warrior call is whatever you want it to be. You face a challenge. It's a call on courage, a scream at the top of your lungs, an outburst, a snarl. Good boy. Whatever you call it, we're telling diabetes that we're not backing down. Mostly it's an attitude. Sometimes you can yell using just your eyes. Upload your warrior call and use the hashtag WarriorUp. Dexcom will make a donation to a diabetes charity for every photo or video posted. So anything, really. It's ab- absolutely anything. We, yeah. we, want, we want everyone to participate who wants to, uh, diabetic or non-diabetic, anyone who knows a diabetic. It's just really for a great cause of putting money you know, towards the charities. And um, I think it can be really fun for anyone involved. And I think, too, just drawing good attention to Diabetes Awareness Month is it mm-hmm. can never be minimized. And um, I know that you know, it's so easy to – like things – it's so easy for, for, I don't know, things to come up in the media that are – that are something that make you upset about diabetes. You know, a late night host says something, or you know, there's even been word recently, like the president, you know, spoke ill of a, a, a just one of the justices in the Supreme Court because she has diabetes, and and mm-hmm. and and that stuff blows up. But this is the stuff we need to blow up. Like we need we need people out there, you know, on showing the other side of it. You know, for, yeah, for I, I, I totally agree. And this is the positive side. This is the side that uh, makes people want to want to join forces and and be strong. And that's uh, that's kind of the goal, you know. Yeah, to create a um, a feeling outside of the diabetes community 
where where other people can look in instead of looking in and hearing the word and thinking all of a sudden, oh, you're sick, you know, it, to see, you know, like I, I, I go back to months ago, I think I was on Instagram one night and you were just out walking your dog in a, you know, and, and I think it was like in the desert or something like that. And I was like, see, Derek's not worried, you, you know, like, <laughs> so yeah. just the yeah. idea of like what people don't think is possible if they don't know anything about living with type one, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Um, other people are involved in it. It's not just you, right? They've, uh, Dexcom's yep. got. Dexcom's got a couple of other, uh, Dexcom warriors, including, uh, Jordan Morris. Who's a soccer player? Right. We've got uh, Eric Hazley, the country singer. We've got the um, uh, Olympic cross country skier uh, Chris Freeman and Ryan Reedend, who's a uh, a NASCAR driver. Ryan Reed, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah, okay. Um, so Chris and I are actually going to talk in a couple of days. Uh, so mm -hmm. when people are listening to this in a, about two weeks after you hear this, I'm going to talk to Chris too. Okay. I've actually known Chris for some time and he, he reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and he's like, I want to come on the podcast. I was like, well, as soon as we have a reason, like, let's do it. And, cool. and, and this popped up. So I thought that's great. You know, very cool. How is, um, I do want to talk about it for a minute. Like, how are you finding, you've been on Dexcom now, uh, you know, a number of months longer than the last time I spoke to you. So are you, how are you using it in your day to day? I guess if the question is, does it feel like it's more necessary for, for my maintenance? Absolutely. Like okay. I, at this point, it's too, too far for me. I, I don't want to live without a CGM. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it just, it seems to me that it's, it's something that like you're like, I know for me, like my understanding of it grows like every day, like what I can do with it and the decisions we mm -hmm. can make, they just become yeah. more fine tuned, I guess, as time goes on. Right. And that's, that's just from us uh, learning more as, as we go and, 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 you know, <laughs> get guessing. I, I think of it as like time in the simulator. Like, you know, just you see something happen to your blood sugar and you go, oh, you know what? Next time, if I would have just maybe put that insulin in five minutes sooner or five minutes later, maybe yeah. that spike wouldn't have happened the way it did. And then the next time you just and, and then it sort of becomes just unconscious after a while where I, I find myself looking at these meals for my daughter and I don't even like I sometimes I don't even count the carbs. I'm just like, oh, she's eaten this before. I know what this needs. It needs this much insulin right about here. And, and then even yeah. if I, even if I miss, you know what I mean? Like the Dexcom tells me and then I just go, Oh, okay. Like a little more, a little less. And yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's the whole point. Yeah. It's pretty cool actually. All yeah. right. Um, so, you know, you, so you teased it last time you, you were, you were getting close to being involved in a Marvel show and you are now. So where is new warriors at? Are you in pre-production production? What does that mean? How's it going? Let's take a second to hear from our sponsor, Omnipod. Listen, Diabetes Awareness Month is in November, but every day you should be aware of what you could be doing for yourself. And I know it's easy to talk about insulin pumps and say, well, you should get an Omnipod because it's tubeless or because you can swim with it or shower with it. You don't have to take it off. It's the little things about that, though, that are important. When you don't disconnect from your insulin, your blood sugar doesn't get high. When your blood sugar doesn't get high, you don't have to correct. That correction doesn't make a low. You don't get trapped on the roller coaster. It's just one more way that you can be healthier and happier and take diabetes out of your day. I definitely think you should try an Omnipod, and Omnipod makes it really simple for you to do that because they offer you a free, no obligation demo pod. They'll actually send out a pod to your house so you can feel it and touch it, hold it, stick it to yourself, and see what you think of it. Now it's free, so come on, how hard can it be to, to just give it a try? Do this for yourself, you know, raise awareness for yourself. Go to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. Do it today, put in a tiny bit of information, let Omnipod send you out a, a demo pod. See what you think. If I'm right, then you can keep talking to Omnipod and get yourself onto the system. And if I'm not right, if you say, hey, I don't believe what Scott said, it didn't work out, no harm, no foul, right? Everybody's different. Maybe it's not for you, but maybe it is. Isn't it worth finding out? MyOmnipod.com forward slash juicebox. Or you can always click on the links in your show notes or at juiceboxpodcast.com. Um, you know what? I don't even know how to answer that. I, I would say we're in production because we've shot our first episode and, um, 
it was it was a great it was a blast i i can't talk a lot about the plot but um i really think it's something unique and fun and the the cast is phenomenal the crew was great it, we went off without a hitch the whole first episode and at this point now we wait and see when uh, we go into full-blown production but from what i've heard uh based on the reviews and everyone who's who's seen it uh it's it's been all positive so i'm excited to get back to work this, so this is comedy based right is it is it slapsticky or is it just is it serious um, and funny it, at the same time it's um it's definitely a comedy it's a half hour comedy i i would relate it to a show uh similar to parks and rec okay with with superheroes is what i would say uh without you know teasing too much but it's uh it's it's fun it's there's uh there's six characters in the new warriors and i found myself trying not to break in every take when uh we would riff and we would we would go through the scenes Excellent. And, and your character, we can say this much, right? Your character can't die. It, it, he, die he can die, but he comes back. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's, um, it's a little vague on exactly the inner workings, mm -hmm. but he, uh, he is immortal. Mr. Immortal is my character, and he cannot die. There's, uh, there's basically nothing that can kill him. So he's one of the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Universe. I can't wait to see every week how they figure out a way to kill you so that you can. I know. Back. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be really fun. It, it really is. And uh, the first episode was a blast, and I, I'm hearing great things about the scripts upcoming. And um, I, I really can't wait to get to work. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. You'll be the you'll be the new Kenny on television. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Oh, Derek. So, what else is um? You know, how do you spend your days when you're when you're leaving one one production, going into another one? So you have work lined up, but it's not, it's not constant right away. Is it just a good and respite? It's, or? The, it's, the, it's the coolest way to be as an actor is to know that you've got work coming that you're excited about. You know, I, I'm so lucky and so fortunate to have this scenario, you know, be my world right now. But at the same time, I also, I, I want to work. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm young. I don't have a family. I want to travel. And uh, I've been auditioning a lot for, for some really great stuff. I worked on American Housewife a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my show is going to be airing sometime in November, I believe. And um, yeah, besides that, I've been I've been traveling a little bit. I uh, I you know I'm going to Mexico in a week and a half. So life is uh, life is really good for an actor who who has a a series ahead of him in the next couple of months. How do you travel with your insulin? Do you what do you do to keep it cold? Like are you so you're in California? So is it a road trip into Mexico? No, no, I, I'm taking a flight. You're flying. So, uh, I uh, yeah, I, I basically whenever I go. Anywhere, I, I try to make sure I can get a refrigerator in the room, and I just I, I travel with it either in a cold pack or not, depending on how long, and that's it. That's it, yeah. There's no real stress about it. You, I mean, you've been type 1 for since you were 3, right? Yeah, since yeah. I was 3, yeah. yeah. So real, I, I don't really remember life without it, but I, um, yeah, I, I know how important it is to not forget supplies. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, right? I I know when we when Arden plays softball or when we travel, like she just went to Arden. Just Netflix kind of um, messed up my household because my daughter at thirteen found One Tree Hill on Netflix, okay. and, and the next thing I know, my wife and my daughter are in a car driving down the East Coast, going to some One Tree Hill convention. And that uh, is so funny. <laughs> so so I took um like a like like just a a cold cup, like a stainless cup, but that had a screw on lid, and put mm -hmm. the insulin inside of um. Like I put it just like in a baggie. I wrapped it in like a couple paper towels so the ice couldn't make like contact right with it. Put a little mm -hmm. ice on both sides of it. My wife said they got down to uh, to North Carolina like 16 hours later, and mm -hmm. it was just perfect in there. And nice, it, good work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I was like, oh, that worked. You know, we're gonna do that again. So, um, so we did. So let me ask you a question then. I guess now that I'm thinking of conventions, are you gonna be at a comic con ever? Um, oh, no doubt. I, that's, that's always been where I want to live. You know, yeah. I, I love comic books. I've been to San Diego Comic Con three times and New York Comic Con once. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to do a panel for Marvel. It's, that's been one of the uh, bucket list goals. Yeah, I, I would say that that seems really exciting. And Arden has now, um, I guess now that she had the fun of... Uh, standing next to one of her favorite actors and getting her picture taken. Now she said to me, what was she said the other day? She goes, Oh, uh, I can't think of the British guy who plays Spider-Man now. Um, Tom, Tom Holland. Yeah. She goes, Tom Holland's going to be at comic con in Arizona. And I said, but honey, we live in New Jersey. And, uh, <laughs> and she's like, I'm just saying, I was like, okay, so maybe funny. I'll see you at one of those one day.
Maybe one day we will we'll see you at a Comic Con. That's cool. That is pretty cool. I mean, it's just so. I mean, we know if people heard you on here before, like this has really been like a goal for you. Like you, you set out like I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to be a superhero. Absolutely. That 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 was the goal since the second I decided to go to LA was to be a superhero. I, I wonder if. I mean, listen, it's not that you're, you know, you're, you're right for the part, obviously. So it's not, it's not like I decided I wanted to be Superman and then I made it happen. It's not that amazing. But at the same time, I, I always think when I hear people who have lived so long with diabetes be so, like, confident and focused and, and know how to get things, I always wonder how much of living with diabetes affects a person's, like, drive and desire and, and like, sort of takes away their – I always think of it as when I hear people – you know, in my regular life, talk about the trials and tribulations in their household. Like I always feel bad because everybody's problems are problems. But when you when you really hear it, I think, gosh, is that what passes for a problem in your house? Like I would love that. Y- y- you right. know, like I wonder if diabetes doesn't just give people that, you know, that feeling of like, look what I deal with. Like, is there really anything? Yeah, that's, that's-, that, that's a good point because like no matter what what most people are going with, what kind of problems they have, like this is this is a constant responsibility that could be fatal if you don't take care of it. So I, um, I don't know if that, that, uh, that point plays into, you know, the striving so hard for success, but I, I definitely think that it has shaped me as a person with, when it comes to responsibility and, uh, and also with, um, you know, how much I value the the time that I have here and how much I I want to make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were getting ready to, to record this, I had Arden was on her way. She's on her way to softball practice. They're going to hit for like an hour in a cage somewhere. And so she's, she's home from school. She's having a snack. Everything's going good. And all of a sudden her blood sugar kind of starts to fall. And, but she's got to leave in like 10 minutes. So I was like, I said, Hey, you know, and she was like 60, I think 71. And she was, she was dropping. So she just grabs like a juice and she drinks it and she grabs a banana and she eats it. And she's on her way out the door. Her blood sugar's still like 61. It's leveled out at that point. But I just thought, like, look how, I don't know, like, fearlessly mature, or ca- yeah. casually or mature, what it ends up being. But she was just like, it'll be fine. And I was like, okay. So, you know, she going with my son, uh, who's driving her. And I just said to call him, like, you know, look, man, she's inside of this metal building. Like, her signal from her phone can't get out of the building. So, like, I just need you to kind of hang out and look at her blood sugar once in a while. If it's an issue, you know, you guys can handle it on your own. Do that. And if you can't. I said that Derek has type one. He won't mind if you, t- you know, you throw me a text if you need to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. But just so casual. Like, like I was just, I was so proud of her, you know? Mm-hmm. It just, and she's, what, is she's 14. How old is she? She's 13. She turned 13, 13. this summer. So she's about 13 and yeah. a half, but, cool. but she was diagnosed when she was two. And, and there are just, I don't know. I see the, I see the parallels pop up in her regular life. Like some kids run around about tests and they're going crazy. And she's always just sort of like, Oh, it'll be fine. You, you, you know, like, it'll be fine. I, was like, huh. I wonder how much mm-hmm. of that you have the, you never think of something like diabetes as being something you could, I don't know, be thankful for in some odd way, but I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it really does shape your habits and, uh, and your personality, uh, because it's just so important. And, um, you know, if she, if she's under good control, then I think that that probably means that she's got a, a lot of other great, you know, character traits that, that are, um, probably associated with, with how important it is and how well she looks after it. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So dark, I would be remiss if I didn't just ask you, like take us all into what it's like to be out in LA and living your life. Like tell us a cool story. Like you told last time you told me about meeting the rock and I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) I'm I'm telling you, I'm having quite a year. I I'm having such a good time. Like I, uh, I, I've started to, uh, branch out and kind of look for the right kind of, um, um, endorsements or the right kind of influencing uh, companies that I'd like to work with. Okay. And one of them is Red Bull. So recently one of my, one of my friends, um, I mean, not, not specifically because I love the drink and the caffeine drinks, but I just love, um, the message and all the extreme sports that they have. They, they have like, you know, hundreds of events worldwide with these, uh, these, these sports, that a lot of people haven't even heard of, right. but anyway, I got, uh, one of my friends is, is working at the Red Bull company and I went in there and had like an initial interview or whatever and, um, and talked about how much I, I like extreme sports and I'm a sports enthusiast. So they, uh, we basically came to the agreement, uh, at the end of the meeting that they were going to try to put me in a Red Bull air race plane. 
It's always been one of my goals, lifelong goals, is to get in a fighter jet and do some of their, like, you know, military maneuvers. That's crazy. And um, that's a lot harder to do than it sounds. I mean, it sounds hard. It's almost impossible for a civilian to get one of those jets. So the next best thing I figured was um, a Red Bull Air Race plane. And if you don't, don't know what that is, those are those planes that fly um, like over the, some of the port cities like Seattle and, and uh, San Diego and fly through these crazy obstacle courses uh, pulling all these Gs, right? Yeah. So anyway, we're, we're, we're figuring it out. We're getting all the logistics for my trip. And then it turns out that you have to be under 215 pounds for the physics to even work in the plane. And that's impossible for me. Oh. So my, that, that dream got shattered in a second. <laughs> but instead, <laughs> they put me up on the, uh, it's called the Red Bull Global Rally Cross. And it's these cars that are like these little supercars that are over 600 horsepower, go zero to 60 in a second flat. And the course is asphalt and then it goes to dirt and mud and then it has this huge tabletop jump where the cars get like 90 feet of air oh my God. and they would put me in a in a car and i got to do that course two weeks ago how was, was that i want to ask you how that was did your blood sugar fly up or did you <laughs> <laughs> my blood sugar i the whole time i was i was keeping an eye on it because last yeah. thing i wanted to do was you know like yeah. go unconscious in the car while we're while we're doing the course, but I actually got to do the qualifying lap with one of the Red Bull racers, and it was the time of my life. It was like a, it was like a um, roller coaster times ten. That's like being on a rocket on the ground. That's that's amazing. Please don't forget that your character is immortal. You're not, but at this, <laughs> right? But that, yeah, that's 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 what the uh, executive producer for my show told me right <laughs> after I left. But um, it, it's like opportunities like that. I, I, I feel like that that's what you're asking about. It's yeah. so cool to to have this job and to to you know. Um, have all these goals and, and, and things that I want to do with my life and I'm getting the opportunities to. So it's it's pretty exciting time. It is just really great. It is an amazing opportunity, especially because it fits with your with the things that you love. It's not like you, you're not having to force something into a, you know, you don't have to, oh, you know, I'd, I'd like to do an endorsement and it's, and it's something that's got nothing to do with who you really are. Yeah, totally, yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm, I'm so fortunate that I, you know, I don't make a living uh, pushing fit tea or whatever, you know, because that that's not... It's not me, but I get I get to work with these companies that I really am uh, really am passionate about that do great things, especially Dexcom in in this whole Warrior Up campaign, um, the Call of the Warrior campaign. I mean, I'm, I'm really really excited for it because um, I think that it could really uh, you know rock the needle in the diabetes community and, and and bring a lot more eyes and ears to the subject. Yeah, and it's necessary. Like I you know I have conversations with people at Dexcom, and I don't think they make any secret of the fact that. As impactful as a tool as it is, it is not as widely understood through the community as, as they would hope or as I would hope, to be perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right yeah. about that. Because every time these days I see a type 1 diabetic or somebody with a, uh, an insulin pump, the first thing I ask them is, do you have a CGM? Because mm -hmm. I, I really believe that the product just makes, makes life so much easier for yeah. a diabetic. Yeah, the pairing is, is, is pretty special, actually, with, with all the things that you can do. But it's just it's one of those things where you, you know, Dexcom... It's, it would be so easy for them to be Kleenex, whereas, you know, there's a bunch of different, you know, companies that make this thing, but they do it so well. You, I want people to know that Dexcom is a brand, that it's not a, that it's not just, you know, one of many ideas. And it, it's, it's really my pleasure to let them, um, to let them have ads on the show because it's, it's, I found that before they were advertising on the show, I I was probably just doing ads for it anyway the whole time I was talking about it because you know we you know you and I aren't doing it as much but I talk like real nuts and bolts about how we manage blood sugars and and it's just it's hard to talk about diabetes and show the success that we're having without using you know talking about the tools that you're using so yeah I totally I totally agree with what you're yeah, saying yeah it's it really has been like it's been such a godsend in our life to be perfectly honest it, this technology in general being able mm -hmm. to afford it. Um, you know, being lucky enough to have insurance where it doesn't, it doesn't crush you to have it is, you know, is obviously a big deal. Um, yeah. and not everybody gets to be in that situation, but I, I really look forward to a day where it's more widely covered. Um, hopefully like Medicare, Medicaid, things like that will come on board and, 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 and be a little more, uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with everything you're saying. I, I recently wrote, uh, an op-ed to the governor in California to, to sign on a, a bill that will make it a little bit easier for a lot of people to get it through their insurance. No kidding. I didn't realize you were, um, you were, you were that you were advocating like that on that end of it. That's really great. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, 
the first one I've done, but uh, Dexcom kind of helped me through the process as well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it just it, it, it's one of those things I, I joked with. I was talking to the the president of Omnipod the other day, and we, she was on the show, and I said to her, Shacey, I'm like, I always think of Omnipod like TiVo. I said, like, you know, everybody's got a DVR. I said, but the TiVo is so great. But if you just have a DVR at home from your, you know, from your cable company, you think, oh, it works, you know, my the show I want's there and everything. But mm-hmm. once you use this thing that's kind of this next level, you realize, wow, it actually can be better. And, like, I think of Omnipod that way, like, is, as – you know, an insulin, a lot of people can think, oh, an insulin pump's an insulin pump. But until you can get one that doesn't have the tubing and, like, all that other stuff is really – it's just – it's magical. But how do you get it into people's hands? Like, how do you how do you get across to a person who's like, I'm doing well enough, you know, that, oh, wow, but it could be it could be easier, it could be better, you know, and, and mm-hmm. if you can afford it, here's how, you know. Um, yeah. That's, that's a tough road to, to, to hoe, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also something personally that um, I, I thought about it because I, I have a different pump than Omnipod. But the thing that, that is always hard for me is all the characters that I play, none of them are diabetic, so I have to hide my sight. So, and I also I take my clothes off a lot for my roles. So, um, <laughs> so I have to find a way to, to, to keep um, my sights hidden uh, for the most part. And that's why I usually use my, my, my top of my, uh, my glutes for that. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to somebody at Omnipod and see if we can get you tubeless pump. That'll be better. Cool. Okay, so it's time to talk about Dexcom. You know, I like you to know about the fall rates and the rise rates. So the Dexcom can tell you when your blood sugar is leaving the range that you've set. You know, I like to tell you about the share features. I have all that stuff I want to tell you about normally, but today let's maybe just focus a little bit on what Dexcom's doing with Call of the Warrior. I'm gonna read a little bit, which. I'll make fun, don't worry. In honor of Diabetes Awareness Month, Dexcom will rally behind 30 million Americans with diabetes and their supporters to create a roaring sound, the Call of the Warrior. Call of the Warrior recognizes the powerful and compassionate people of the diabetes community and their ability to overcome challenges. A warrior call is anything that tells diabetes or any challenge you're facing in life that you're not backing down. For every warrior call photo or video posted in November, of 2017 on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag WarriorUp. Dexcom will donate $1 to a diabetes charity. Those charities include Children with Diabetes, the JDRF, Beyond Type 1, Taking Care of Your Diabetes, and the College Diabetes Network. Now, Derek has battled with diabetes since he was three years old, and to help spread the word and raise money for diabetes research, Derek is going to send out his own warrior call over social media on November 1st. He's going to encourage others to hashtag warrior up and to do the same. Now you've already heard Derek's call because I got it for you, but there's also going to be soccer superstar Jordan Morris. He's going to join the call as his country singer, Eric Pasley and a bunch of others, Chris Freeman. You look around the hashtag, you're going to find some people you know and love who are getting involved. And if you want to get a Dexcom, go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box to find out more. But for this week, let's not sell Dexcom. Let's talk about the call of the warrior, but let's sell Dexcom too. I mean, I got to keep these ads going. So go to my, <laughs> right? So go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box and get out there and make your call of the warrior video. I can't wait to see it. So you played football in school, right? Yeah. And so uh, this is probably pretty far off the path, but what do you think of like there being 8,000 football teams in California now? Is it confusing? It, yeah. I mean, it's... I. None of them are, are my team, so it's, it's not that crazy. But it, it is weird that we've got two brand new teams in L.A. And I don't know. It's, it, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Broncos fan for life, so it doesn't, I guess, affect me that much. But does it, does it um, I, I, I guess, can, can the town, like, support that? Like, is, it, is, is L.A. just that vast that you can do? Because in Jersey, to be perfectly honest, I mean, the Jets and the Giants play at the same place. And, right. you know, it, it doesn't seem to affect them. But I don't know. The Eagles, we're from, I'm from Philadelphia originally. So I was watching the Eagles game in San Diego and, the, and uh, San Diego with the Chargers. And there were yeah. more Eagles fans at the Chargers game than there were Chargers fans. And I was like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's still, I think, the way that it is. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what I can say on the subject besides that I, I don't think that the amount of fans they'd hoped have moved. I got you. Okay. Yeah. It just seems like such a, it just seemed really strange to me. I know, I know you played and, and you were a fan uh, of the Broncos. So I just thought, I was like, I wonder what you think of that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy that uh, the the Broncos and Chargers just played in a stadium that holds twenty five thousand people. You know. Yes. It's, yeah, you. It's wild. You want a football game to happen in a big, in a stadium that holds fifty and sixty like that that size? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely think it's odd. I, I remember watching it on television. I was like, wow, there's. This is not even like a. This isn't even like a midweek baseball crowd. You, you, you know, yeah. like, like it was. It was really something. So that's all. Yeah. All right, Derek. So I don't want to keep you any longer than like you know. I'm. I'm not trying to. I don't want to drag you out here. And at the same time, I love talking to you. So, you know, but it's all good, man. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. So I. I just don't want to. Um, I don't know. Like I don't want to make it feel like I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing for the call. You know, the the warrior call because it's. Because I don't want to oversell it, but I am really excited about it. So I, I want I want people to understand what Dexcom can do. I always just think of, you know, I said it earlier, like I don't want people just to think of it as being an alarm for when you get low. There's so mm-hmm. much good information that comes out of the data that comes from Dexcom. It really does help you make these great decisions. And it would be exciting to me to think of all the people that could be out there living like that, you know, making kind of these fine adjustments to keep your blood sugar from spiking and dropping and things like that. I, I just, it's one of those things like I, I just wish, I wish everybody could try it for a second. You, you know what I mean? Just yeah. so they could see. No, no, you're out. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I know we've, we've touched on the subject several times that, that whenever I see someone who's diabetic, I want to make sure they're aware that the PGMs exist out there. And, yeah. And I, I'm I'm very proud to work for Dexcom because it's just such such an amazing device, and um, I I think that it 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 would be a lot easier for for everyone to try it one time because I, I know they'll be hooked and realize that it really is the the best device for the job when it comes to maintaining your blood sugar. Yeah, I just I, I struggle with balancing sometimes between wanting to get that across to people and not feel like I'm selling really hard and, and because I'm not, because it is really, it is just amazing. So I don't know where we'd be without it, to be perfectly honest. I, you know, I talk about, um, pretty freely speak about Arden's A1C here and it has been at this point now we're between five, six and six, two for four years. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And I can't do that without, without CGM and it just, I I can't make it happen. You you know what I mean? So I, I'm not, I'm not very good at this without that, I guess is the point. Uh, But anyway, all right, so am I missing anything? Like, I, I, I want you to tell me more about about the TV show about New Warriors, but I know you probably can't say a whole lot. Yeah, I can't tell you much more about that. Um, I don't know what else. I mean, life's, life's good. It's my birthday uh, on the 29th, which is the JDRF One Walk. This, this, is this podcast going to come out after that? Uh, the 29th of October? Yeah. It will come out, how many, it's just 31 days in October? I'm forgetting the... Um, the thing yeah, it's the thirty first right, Halloween. Right. Yeah, so it will be out on November first. So just a couple of days. Cool. Out, uh, so yeah, so this is a couple of days after the one walk. I'm really excited for that, though. Uh, in our world, it hasn't happened yet, but it's on my birthday, and it'll be the fourth year we're doing it in Pasadena. And and everyone who comes out uh, gets a, t- a Dexcom T shirt and gets to walk with the team. So it's it's really a fun event. Oh, uh, that's excellent. Is it always on your birthday, or is it just coincidental this year? It's you know what? it's so brutal. It's always. Right close to my birthday, because my birthday is the 29th, and uh, I have a Halloween birthday bash every year at my house, and it's... it's a long day. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a super annual, like I do it every single year, and it's a huge party, and then I have to like drag all of my best friends to wake up early in the morning and go do this walk with me, so it's like kind of this, uh, this trial of friendship that I have with, my, with all my close friends who <laughs> come to this big party, and everyone gets super dressed up, and it goes very late. And then we get up at the crack of dawn the next day, and I have to get on stage and give a speech and do the walk. But it's it's fun. It's it's really fun uh, fun to be out there. But it, it's always after a really long night. Do you a find lot of people probably don't know that? <laughs> do you find do your friends become sort of like like mini advocates for diabetes because they're around you? Do they does does that understanding? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't say they would push Dexcom quite as hard as me on people, mm-hmm. but they they definitely are more aware uh, of like situations where diabetics are having issues. I, I remember one of my friends uh, not too long ago told me that, that he was on vacation with his girlfriend and, uh, and a, a woman had a low blood sugar and he knew how to handle it thanks to you know, hanging out with me. So he got, um, he got the, the woman's daughter to, to go and find like a Sprite and, and bring it to her immediately and nobody else in the area knew what was going on. So it was, it, it's really cool to have moments like that where you know that you're you're helping those in need who are diabetic out there just by get, 
people and friends gaining knowledge. Just a total stranger he just happened to happened upon and was having a problem. Yeah, and knew exactly, you know, how to handle the situation because uh, because of things he'd been through with me. It's funny you said that when I very first started writing my blog like a decade ago, that was my like my overarching goal was I thought if I could find people who don't know about diabetes and, and let them learn a little bit about it, maybe one day they'll be around somebody who needs the help. Like that was the like the exact thought I had at that moment. Like and I guess my more personal thought was like maybe if my daughter ever needs help somebody will be around who I've affected and and might know how to help her so it was really cool that 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 worked out like that um yeah so you you have a big Halloween party every year is it it's too on the nose to be a superhero or or no um no 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 (laughs) definitely not but but the most important thing is is you go all out on your costume it's a very there's a costume contest like it's a big deal no kidding so um yeah, this year I'm going as uh, Judge Dredd, the Carl Urban version. And Very I've got, nice. Like, a full blown cosplay suit, completely fits like a glove. So I'm really excited. I loved, I loved that remake. I thought that was. I so did cool. too. That was one of my favorite actions the yeah. last several years. It reminded me so much of. Um, have you ever seen Raid Redemption? Yep. Yes, yeah, sure did. I was just like, I was like, this is fit. Like when I saw they were making a remake of Judge Judge Dredd, I'm old enough to think. So the car that Stallone crashes in and it fills with foam and he doesn't get hurt, like we're doing that again? That was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but man, that movie was just, there's nothing like like putting like close quarters action in a place and that, that, apart, that high-rise apartment concept was yeah. such a great idea. I, I loved that film. And you know, it's a funny, funny thing is um, the crew that worked on that film in South Africa most of the crew that worked on that film also worked on my, my shark killer movie that I filmed in Africa. Seriously? <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of behind the scenes stories about shooting that film. No kidding. Are they going to do another one? I thought I heard that they might, but. Man, I hope so. I know they're in talks of uh, creating a TV show, and Carl Urban would come and rep- reprise his role just for like a couple of episodes a season, and then it would follow the judges. And um, honestly, Half the reason I'm making this suit for my Halloween costume is because that's on my vision board is to, pl- to play a judge. Well, you know, it, oh, that's a great idea. But but oh, oh that would be fantastic because he's not you're you've got to be way bigger than he is, right? Oh yeah, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually ran into him uh, at this last Comic Con. Oh no, kidding. Well, he's got to be yeah. crazy busy with Star Trek, I would imagine. Well, yeah, and he was he's in Thor Ragnarok. He's one of the main bad guys. So Carl Urban's killing it. And how all right, this is way off the the beaten path. But how badass does Thor look like it's going to be? Oh, it looks awesome. I, I Everyone who's seen it has been raving about it, so I can't wait. Yeah, I saw, um, I think I saw Kevin Smith on social media last night just say he saw it and said how just what an amazing time it was. But that's yep. just one. I The visuals on that one, um, it, it feels like the technology and the direction on this movie are really coming together with what you expect in the backgrounds from like a comic book movie. Like it really looks rich and colorful and I'm, I'm yep. it looks fun. Like it looks like it's going to be not, I wasn't trying to tie it together with your TV show, but it, it totally looks like they're just going to take the, the the humor aspect of it and just make it a bigger part of and, and run with it yeah, as yeah, they yeah. should because it it's it, it looks like a really fun ride. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, you can't treat a big green monster too seriously. So I guess is the mm-hmm. <laughs> is the way to go. Oh, so now I'm thinking about you as a dread in the in a TV show. Jeez. Yeah, that'd be uh, pretty cool. That is excellent. Oh my god! All right, look, Derek, I'm gonna let you go. It's Friday. You got to have something better to do than talk to me. But <laughs> <laughs> but I I genuinely do appreciate doing this. I know that you were limited on 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 the venues that you could hit with the interviews this time. So I, I'm really grateful you came back and did this again. You got uh, last time you were on the show, we got featured on iTunes. So maybe we can try for Sweet. that again and see what happens. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm willing to talk to you anytime, Scott. No, I, I really do appreciate it. Dark. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, man. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Derek, for coming on and wishing you great luck with your new television show we'll all be watching. Thank you also to Omnipod and Dexcom for sponsoring the podcast. Please go to myomnipod.com forward slash juicebox to find out more or dexcom.com forward slash juicebox. Why or both? Go to both of them. I hope something I said about Diabetes Awareness Month stuck with you and that you're going to go out and really try to help another person living with type 1 diabetes. Help one, help five, help 10, help as many as you can. Get them to that spot you feel right now right? That great spot where you feel bold and emboldened inside. It's fantastic. 
Let's also say one more time, the Call of the Warrior campaign goes out through November. If you'd like to make a video or a picture and hashtag it, hashtag warrior up, put it on Instagram or Facebook. That's where the donations will come from. I mean, you can put it on Twitter too, but I think that Dexcom's focusing on Instagram and Facebook for their donations. Just get out there and try to empower somebody else. You can do it. Diabetes is challenging, but it doesn't hold me back. With one simple act of solidarity, I believe that we can create a vibration so loud it will be heard around the world. So, here's the challenge, warriors. We need you to send in a video of your best warrior call. A warrior call is whatever you want it to be. It's how you face a challenge. It's a call on courage, a scream at the top of your lungs, an outburst, a snarl. Good boy. Whatever you call it, we're telling diabetes that we're not backing down. Mostly it's an attitude. Sometimes you can yell using just your eyes. Upload your warrior call and use the hashtag warrior up. Dexcom will make a donation to a diabetes charity for every photo or video posted.